All right, class, welcome back. Um, today, what we're going to do is discuss the pipe wrap, wrap around, um, and how to properly use a wrap around for your pipe fitting and pipe welding layout class. Um, some of the tools that you're going to need with you today are going to be your pipe fitters and pipe welders handbook. You're also going to need a tape measure. You're going to need a calculator, uh, a center punch. You're also going to need a center punch. You are going to need a one pound ball peen hammer and sharp soapstone. Um, always start off with sharp soapstone. You want to aim small, miss small, and laying out lines on a piece of pipe. So I'm going to go ahead, sharpen my soapstone up a little bit, and then we'll continue with a lesson on the wrap around. started here. This is a wrap around. Um, they come in many different sizes, widths. Uh, some are magnetic, um, some are not. You'll see that there is a scale that we will utilize while using the wrap around on with your wrap around. Um, so the first thing here is to uh, understand what it's used for. Um, if I take and I try to freehand draw a line on the pipe you can see that the, the line is not square to the pipe at all. Um, the wrap around enables us to achieve a square line to the surface or the OD of the pipe. And how we do that is you start here, hold that, make sure it's square to the pipe, that there's no gaps along the seam of the wrap around, and you wrap it around the pipe. Like so. Okay. Now we have an edge here to follow to draw a line. Um, and so taking your tape measure, we're going to take and uh, measure out a 20 inch piece of pipe here. And uh, you can see here that the end of this piece of pipe is not square to the world. So what we're going to do here is take and make a reference line on the end of the pipe. using your wrap around. Now we have a square line and a reference to pull all our other measurements off of using this line here. 20 inches, burn an inch, come out. We're going to mark it at 21 inches. Using our wraparound, make another line. Hold it in place, make sure that it's tight to the pipe. Come all the way around the pipe. draw your line just like so now let's say you needed to cut this with an oxy fuel torch and the piece of pipe that you needed need to be 20 inches in length I would take and cut on this side of the line to where my kerf start on the end of the pipe come into the line don't cut on the line and discard that and then cut on this side of the line over here that way you're left with the piece of pipe that's 20 inches long if i take and cut directly on the line here and here i'm going to end up with a piece of pipe that's too short okay 
Next thing we're going to cover here is how to figure out the circumference of a piece of pipe and how to divide the pipe into four equal parts needed for the next lesson. Um, in your pipe books on page 148 and 149 gives a standard pipe chart data that you will reference to throughout this class to figure out different measurements that are given off of the pipe. Depending on the size of the pipe, we need to understand what the outside uh, diameter of the pipe is. I could simply take this and measure across, find the largest measurement, four and a half would be the OD of the pipe, even though it's four inch nominal pipe. Um, going to page 148, come down here, nominal pipe, four inch. We find that the actual outside diameter of the pipe is four and a half, and it gives us our circumference there. 14.137. That's starting at one point here and going all the way around and ending back to that same point. It's 14 inches and just over a quarter. So keep that number in mind. 14.137 is outside circumference of the pipe. There's another math formula that you might be familiar with that you could use. We know the OD of the pipe, which is the diameter of the pipe, is 4.5 times pi, or 3.14. We don't need all the rest of those numbers because, uh, well, we're welders and we don't go too much further than the second decimal. So 4.5 times pi, you should come out with 14.1337. Okay. Now, to divide the pipe into four equal parts, we'll take that number and divide it by four. With the calculator. 14.137 divided by four. And it's just over three and a half. We're going to call it 3.5. Okay. Now to find top dead center, we use an angle finder like this. Um, set that right on the pipe like that. Let me turn this so you can see it. Hopefully you can see it. Such as this, find zero. Give you a little reference mark there. Nice tool. That's if the pipe's stationary, you cannot roll it. Find it. Take your center punch. Mark that heavier, put a heavier dimple in there. Point number one. Okay. Now if you had that and the pipe was stationary and you couldn't move it, you could simply take this, find zero, move it 90 degrees, hit it again, and so forth, all the way around your line to find the different points on the pipe to divide it by into four equal parts off of degrees. Um, Let's say that the pipe is just like it is, and we were able to move it. Oh, we moved it, so now we don't know where that first point is. That's fine. If we come off of that point three and a half, all the way around the pipe, we can then mark it out. And using your wraparound, we'll do that. Put your wraparound at zero. Come here. Mark it at three and a half. And we'll, later on, we'll go ahead and center punch these marks after we get them laid out. Start at zero again. Three and a half. <coughs> zero. Three and a half. Now we have four equal spots around the pipe. We'll go ahead and take and center punch them marks. Um, 
the pipe. And it's always a good idea to number the spots because we'll use them later on as we go through this lesson. Starting here, this is number one, two, three, and four. Now we have our lines, but let's say we want this line to go all the way down the length of the pipe so we can mark it back here on this reference line. Um, you can take a structural shape such as a piece of angle iron like this, line it up on your punch mark and draw your line to the total length of the, the part. If your pipe is stationary and this was top dead center, point number one, we would then take and find top dead center down here, and then this would be in line with that. Okay. Go ahead and draw those lines out. Line one. Down the length of the pipe. Working our way around the pipe. Line two. Three. And four. Make sure that angle iron is square to the pipe. Okay. If you have a square um, and you want to check the end of the pipe to see if it's square, uh, you can come right off the very end of the pipe if it is square. Um, a lot of times, though, it's going to be a torch cut surface, but if it's a factory end like you have down here, you can take your square, set it up along the outside diameter of the pipe, and bring it into the face of the very end of the pipe, and if it hits here and here, you know it's square in this direction. You would then take your square and move it 90 degrees and check it across these two spaces, four points. Um, and then you know the end of your face is square to the, to the rest of the world here. Okay. If it's not, you have to touch it up. You can touch it up with a grinder if you have to. But now we have our four lines equally spaced around the pipe to where we can go and, and lay out for the next pipe fitting. Um, if you're having a hard time finding the book, um, Contact me, we'll get you down to the bookstore uh, at the college, and we can get this book for you. It's the Pipe Fitters and Pipe Welders Handbook, revised edition by Thomas W. Franklin. Uh, it's listed in the syllabus. Um, if you can't get to the bookstore, you can go down to Norco and purchase it right off the shelf. They have a pile of them sitting down there for you. Um, they're pretty inexpensive. It's a very useful book and we'll be using this book um, throughout this class. You're going to be reference, reference different pages in this book for different fittings um, and things like that. So, like I said, if you have any questions or comments, things like that, you want to reach out to me. Um, Web Campus is one means of doing it. My email and also my cell phone. So go ahead and, and uh, let me have it. And, let me know what you think about these videos as we keep going forward, um, and I thank you for your time.